this is the Great Bear Rainforest. This is a place on the British Columbia, Canada coastline. And this is one of those unique places where you can be sitting in a boat. And you look at the land, and you can watch a bear and a wolf on the beach. And you look around, and there's a humpback whale and orca in the water. This is one of those incredible, rare locations where a wild landscape still meets a wild ocean. Those places have largely been relegated into the history books. This is also the only place in the world where humpback whales sing on their feeding grounds. And this is what their songs sound like. So I first went to the Great Bear Rainforest in 2010 on an expedition organized by the International League of Conservation Photographers to document the biodiversity of this area. Why? Well, because tragically, there was a proposal to put an oil pipeline that runs from the Alberta oil sands all the way to the Pacific Ocean, and then have large super tankers traveling through these sort of remote fjords and channels to take the oil to Asia. And the Gitgat First Nation, who were the local you know, stewards of this coastline, had invited us to help them try to you know, raise awareness of that realm. It's a rough coastline, it's not a place for tankers. And in my mind, you know, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when a spill will occur if these tankers do move into that area. It's just this incredible, incredible wild place. Published in 2011, 2012, and um, but that was not the end of it for me. I was hooked by this place. I think I went back three seasons in a row on my own, working with local NGOs and the Gitgat First Nations. And for me, the terrestrial realm had been documented very well, but the underwater world, by and large, was completely unknown. So I went there to try to you know, really create an exhaustive portfolio of life in the seas off the Great Bear Rainforest. This is the cradle of kelp evolution. Nowhere else on Earth are there that many species of kelp. It's a cold, it's a nutrient-rich sea. Highest diversity of starfish in temperate waters. This is a sunflower starfish. They grow to this sort of size. They're the largest shallow water starfish in the world. You know, three, four kilos. Incredible predators. But for me, the one species that screamed out pulsating life were jellyfish. And in the right months of the year in the fjords, they aggregate in incredible numbers to spawn. Smacks of jellyfish that I just learned a few years ago. It's not schools, it's a smack. And this is basically me. I've turned the camera around on myself, and I'm now trying to basically swim into the densest part of the jellyfish school. Don't ask me why. It's just, it's just one of those things. They're caressing me. I'm being tickled by jellyfish. I think I get a little jellyfish hat now. There we go. There's a little, little, little cap there. And water's cold. It's four or five degrees every hour. I climb on the boat with my elbows because I can't feel my hands or my legs. I kind of just, you know, like a seal chimney out of the boat. I have this hot water hose in my wetsuit for 10, 15 minutes, lying on the swim platform, like, you know, crying and shivering. You know, I do that three, four times a day. You sleep really, 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 really well on these. Uh, uh, you know. In the Great Bear Rainforest, the one species that is more important than any other, if there can be such, is a salmon. Now, once a year, these fish abandon their life in the ocean and they move inshore and they swim up rivers to spawn. I arrive at this one pool right below a waterfall. And I found this little side chamber, this little sort of nook in the corner. And I kind of you know, wedged myself in there, and, and, and I waited. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I think it was about 45 minutes later that one fish came back. And then another one came back. And then I just waited like a, you know, I couldn't move anyway. I was too cold, so I wasn't going to scare them. And then I got this picture. So all these fish just kind of huddled together, waiting to pretty much take on these mighty, mighty waterfalls. I also though, wanted an image that illustrated the connection that a lot of the wildlife has with these salmon. And I had dreamt up this picture of a split level, which is half underwater, half above water. Underwater, you have the salmon. And above, you have a bear with a salmon in its mouth and the waterfall flowing behind with a rainbow running diagonally across the frame. I sketched my pictures, and that's what I sketched. Very rarely do I get my sketches, but you know, dream big, it'll fail spectacularly. <laughs> Anyways, black bear, expert fisherman. He's waiting, he's waiting, he goes up, and he's got one. And I watched this bear for hours. He had this technique, and once he gets one, he walks up into the forest, eats, and every 15 minutes, so he comes back down, he gets hungry again, he gets another one. And he disappears, and now he comes back. In the meantime, I snuck into the water. And he's just not sure. You know, this is bear snorkeling 101. The bear can smell you even if you're in the water, something I learned. I'm trying my best. I'm sneaking up to this bear. 
you know, I can see the salmon underwater, I have this picture in my head, and I try, and I try, and I try. And every time I get past this little area, right about now, he spots me. He goes like, I got you. I see you, you damn National Geographic photographer. <laughs> and it's just like, and I go, OK, fine, I give up, man. All right, all right, plan B. If I can't get a picture of a bear and a salmon, let me get a picture of a salmon leaping from the bear's perspective. And I've timed this. I have 15 minutes before the bear comes back. So I sit where the bear sits. And I got pummeled with salmon. Now, this hurts. You know, I had bruises, but again, I'm not worried about flash placement. Every time I place the flash, they hit the flash again. And, and so, complete disastrous, disastrous mix of things. And it's like a shotgun, they come in waves. Bang, 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 bang. And there's one frame that I kind of like, and it kind of sort of, you know, connects. I wanted a picture that connects the salmon with the forest. And this is what I got. You know, you know salmon in the trees, I call it. 